Hi beautiful people, welcome to Kate's Space, welcome back, welcome to new subscribers, welcome to all my subscribers, thanks for watching. We are going to do part two of making this little doily book, a word on the word doily. Uh, I have been spelling it wrong and you know, it's not a big deal, but I wondered how it was spelt and apparently... I've got these really old paper doilies here that I bought and doily, D-O-Y-L-E-Y. I think it looks way prettier spelt D-O-I-L-Y or D-O-I-L-I-E. Anyway, just a little aside there for doily. I hope that you're crafting along and you've got as far as we got in the last video. So we made... Well, I made this cover and sewed this on. And then I thought, oh, I'm going to make another one. So I also made this cover. So as you can see, that's basically the other side of the same doily that I've used here. Um, and yeah, another, well, that's, you know, the linen. And then I, um, this is a vintage sort of eyelet with the little blue. So I've done blue picked up the blue in this flower and this one's got a bit of a so this one's got more vintage on it yeah and then I just stitched and stitched and stitched in lines down like that don't know why I just did so I've got the cover that we made event originally and what I decided to do with this one and I didn't do this on the video because I you know me I was playing around and I couldn't make up my mind so what I've done is I got a piece of calico the same size as the board and I used some PVA glue and I've glued it on one thing I hadn't decided what to do was whether I was going to stitch it um, on the sewing machine and I didn't I decided I didn't want to and this is the other one I've made I made a mistake by not cutting off this um, bit on the cardstock which is you know the the bit you trim off but I've covered it with some tape and I think by the time I put the fabric over it you won't see it so uh, I make silly mistakes like that all the time but I'm not going to throw it in the bin just because of that so yeah so what we're going to do now is work with this original one is sew this onto our board and I am going to do it by hand, I've decided, and that will come right through and you'll see it on this side. And I may or may not like that, I don't know, I'm just going to wait and see. So I've got embroidery thread and I'm going to use two strands like I have for everything else. And you do not, if you want it, if you are crafting along and you're doing this, you so don't have to do this if you think it's crazy. Um, like I said in the other video, well, I think I did, it's not as hard as it looks. And it's gonna, as in, it's not as difficult to get the needle through the cardboard, is what I mean when I say it's not as hard as it looks. I can't even remember how I, what I did with the knot on the other one. Maybe I hid it or maybe I covered it when I, and I think what I also did is I glued it in some spots to keep hold it where I wanted it. So I'm going to do that, probably going to do that now and I'm just going to use a little bit of glue because I don't want any glue showing through. So let's just, um, get some glue going on here. go I'm just gonna do a little bit like that really can't remember what I did last time but anyway I don't really want it I don't want it actually glued on as per se so I just want it Like that, right? 
just go like that. Because you can't pin it, it's the next best thing. So we'll just do a little bit of a little few dabs of glue here and there just to give it a little bit of stability while we sew it on. So I mean this in no way this would in no way hold this fabric on here. It's just to stabilize it a little bit so it doesn't move around when it's being sewn on. So here we go. I've got my thread with my knot and I think I'll hide it by going under under the fabric so the knot's hidden. And then we just start stitching. So we go through, whoops, yep, yeah, that's going to do that, so we'll just So that's the other thing, you can make the holes because So I think this is all I did <laughs> uh, It wasn't that long ago, but I've forgotten already But anyway, this is what I'm doing this time I'm sure it'll be fine once you get going with it, the needle passes through the two layers of the cardstock quite easily. And you just keep on sewing like so. And yeah, you're going to get this sort of rustic looking thing on the inside, which I don't mind. But again, some people would loathe that which is fine. Everyone's different. Everyone likes different things. That's what's so great. So I'm just going sort to of guesstimate where my needle needs to go along here. I suppose I could... I could... use a sewing machine on the other one but I don't know if I want to think about that after we've done this we're going to choose our papers and fold them and get them ready to be aged and ready to be sewn into the book So what I'm probably going to do is fast forward this. I probably need to work out a way of putting music to the fast forwarding. But I don't really know how to do that. I think you have to have iTunes so that you can get a, um, yeah, some music in your iTunes library that you can then add to your iMovie and then add it to your video. But I don't really know. So I hope everyone is well. I know there's some big fires going on in the US and I hope everyone's safe. I saw someone had posted a picture up on one of the Facebook groups that I belong to and wow it just looked oh wow it just looked quite eerie the just the glow of the red of the fires outside the house. So hmm, quite phenomenal. Okay, so I finished sewing this fabric cover to this piece of cardstock with the calico on the inside. As you can see, it's pretty random. That's the word, random. Uh, but it's it's attached 
On the other one, I went down either side of the spine, hand stitched down like that, but I'm not going to on this one because I've added a little bit more glue and it feels it feels really well attached, so I'm going to leave it at that. Um, yeah, maybe the lesson from this one is probably don't put your fabric on the board before you've sewn your cover on, unless you really like this kind of look. But so I will, uh, I don't know, I'll probably cover this up, but again, that doesn't need to be done right now. So that's that one done. And I've started on my second one. So that one's been, I added a bit of glue to that and I've laid it out how I want it. And I'm just stitching around the outside here. Same as this on the other one, but this one is definitely going to be covered and lined on the inside, probably with some scrapbooking paper or maybe some fabric. I don't know. I haven't decided, so we shall see. I think the fabric, you'll see the stitching possibly too much through it, whereas some scrapbooking paper is a bit more robust and it won't show the same, but. That again, like whoops, like the other one, that decision can be made at a later date. So that's all good. But yeah, sewing machine will be do the job perfectly well. And in fact, if you don't like sewing, you can just use glue. It would be perfectly fine just gluing this on because, oh wow, that does not want to go through there. Um, it's got already got all the stitching on the front, it doesn't really need any more. Uh, it's probably a little bit overkill, but you know. Ouch, oops, I just stabbed my finger, ow. More is more, that's my motto. Once you've done that, once you've stabbed your finger with the opposite, you know, the, the, the eye end of the needle, that's all you keep doing after that. <laughs> I might have to put my thimble on. I don't think it fits on that finger. Oh, yeah, it does. There we go. It's obviously a bit thicker up here. So, yep, just keep on. Whoa, that does not want to go through there. Just some of that old vintage lace. It's obviously very... <laughs> it does not want to go in. There you go. I got it. Wow. You thought the cardboard was hard to sew through. It's the lace that's the problem. Try and protect that finger because I've now stabbed a big hole in it. All right. I'll turn the camera off and I'll be back when this is done. Okay, so now this one's done as well. Again, the stitching on the inside looks a bit wobbly and random, but that's okay. That's going to be covered and, and reinforced with glue around that edge, so that'll be fine. And again, I've only just gone around the edge on that one, so that's that one and that one. Two little book covers. Book A and book B. So there we go. Excellent. Now what? Now we are going to choose our papers. Well, not we, I am. If you're crafting along, then yep, that's cool too. So I've got a whole lot of papers here that I've picked out. Um, I've measured my book cover and it is about four four and a quarter so I've made them eight and a half this way not all of them they're all quite random I'm using a lot of scraps so eight and a half that way folded in half and then the, um, this way it's about six so I've made them five and three quarters tall just so that they're inside the cover I did notice on the other one that the giving away I pretty much the page is the same size as the as the card oh no there oh, there's a little gap not much of a gap but anyway 
So that's what I've done. So I've found some old note paper here. So this is out of a um an old vintage sewing exercise book. This is out of an old 1927 diary. I've got some ledger. I've just got some I don't know, this is just a, like a plain refill, I guess you'd call it. That's been tea stained. Um, plain tea stained paper. There's a piece of wallpaper. Another piece of wallpaper. Oh, I don't think I'll use that, but I might get some note paper because I like the torn off bit there. So there's some little letter paper. Some more of that book page. This is some old school you know, um, writing paper for writing letters, a different ledger, some kind of like drawing paper, I think that is, it's tea stained, vintage music, um, this glassine bag, but I'm going to take this washi tape off because I don't really like it, don't know why it's on there, can't remember, so I might put that glassine bag on there. And then a little paper bag and some book pages. This is an old book page, which I'll probably just fold in half like that. And everybody knows how I love that plain book page that's at the end, papers of old books. That's another one. And then the little pages out of that little um, flowers birthday book, which I love. And then I found a few cool images in my Weeds of New Zealand book, which I think I might use as well. So there's quite a lot of papers there. And I think I'm going to do how many? Five, five little signatures in each book with about five pages in each one. So we just start folding, really. This is pretty exciting stuff as well, isn't it? So we're going to start folding them and then the next thing I'm going to do is get out some paint and gesso and do a little bit of um, aging of the papers. Well, I don't know if it's really aging. Lots of people do it. Artie Mays does it. Uh, Amity Bloom in the Amity Bloom course that we did, um, she uses um, a couple of colours of paint to just of age and give texture to her pages so kind of did a little bit on that course Heidi McGregor she does it lots of people do it so we might do it too what do you reckon so the paper bag is the decision is whether to open it up and this one seems to be oh, it's ripping a little bit there so just make the decision about whether I want to have that open at both ends so there's that bit glued down I'm not sure not sure about that anyway I'll fold it in half like that way and that again can be a decision that we make and then same with the glassine bag whether we want that open do we want that open at that end I might just fold it like that and make that decision later too Yeah. So yeah, any scraps you've got, ripped pages are always good in this little book. Um, some old music paper, which I've folded that over, so that'll make a little tuck spot. And they're same again there. This one's just as is. And this one's turned up at the bottom, and I'll probably put that in the middle because I want that whole word rather than only being able to see half the word. And we've got that one there. That one looks too big, but maybe I'm going to fold that somehow. That one, that one. That looks like it's going to be a short page. This one looks like it's going to be folded somehow. This one in. And then this 
this little note that I might do more of those. Let's fold this one. So if we are going to do five wee signatures and about five pages, five pieces of paper in each signature, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's five, 25, 25 pieces of paper. Oh, this one needs... This one needs trimming down. And so does this one. That one's folded. Let's just measure that. Eight and a half. Yep. whacked the camera with my ruler apologies i'm just gonna tear this down there like that and fold it and this one do i want to make a I make a pocket with this one because it's quite sturdy don't know if I love this wallpaper. I got this for like 50 cents at a craft store. So I don't know, the jury's still out on it. But it's quite nice, sturdy, textured paper. So I'm sure we'll better do something with it. What do we need? Oh, we need to cut some of that off. Yeah, shouldn't, probably shouldn't have folded that. Um... I'll just do it this way. What do we say? Four and a quarter. So there we go. Four and a quarter there. Just rip that. Rip that. And then rip that as well. This piece needs to be. So I don't want a big, huge tuck spot like that, so I'm gonna. I'm just gonna tear this. I kind of like how the teared, torn looks. And then I'm going to tear it down there. All these bits will be kept for a little while. And then once they're not, if they don't get used, believe me, they will be thrown out. Because I am trying not to keep Oops, too many scraps. Okay, so what else needs to be made narrower? I see that sticking out too far as well, but maybe that one won't work for us. Um, I might not, might not be able to use that one. So what have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, seven, twelve, thirteen. 14. Now this one needs something done to it. So I'm gonna shorten 
and this one down. I'm going to cut this one for a minute. Pop this in case. Okay. So that one down and then... This one. Okay. So this one just needs to be folded along here, and I like all this rough bit there where it's been torn out of the ledger. I'm going to keep that. I'm not going to. Normally, I would cut all that kind of stuff off, but now I'm just a bit more. No, keeping that. Keeping it. Looks old and grungy, and I like it. So I'm keeping it. This is not definitely not everybody's style. So if you don't like it, go through your paper pages and trim them up how you want them to be. Obviously, not how I want them to be. If you're crafting along, anything goes because it's junk journaling, and we can do whatever we want. I've got my new Fiskars trimmer. I bought one. Finally, after a big discussion, can you see this? It's quite big. <laughs> after a big discussion on, um, I saw on Facebook, one of the Facebook groups, someone was going to buy one and I was like, oh, I need, a, I really need a new one. I'm sick of my blades always going blunt. And the feedback on this one was really good. So I have, I took the plunge. I mean, it really, I mean, in the big scheme of things, it actually really wasn't that expensive, so. Um. Oh, wow. Okay, so now we've got hail. So it was beautifully sunny before, now it's hailing. That's what our weather's like today. We're going to have four seasons in one day, I think. It's okay. I'm just going to rip this piece. Because I like the way this old music paper rips. It looks so nice. Okay, so that's that piece done. Right. Here we go. I think I've done everything. The only thing I haven't got is some of this paper. So I might just go grab some of that. I'll be back. Okay, so I went and got some of this note paper. I did a batch of really dark tea staining. Mm, I'm not sure if I love it. But anyway, I'm still going to use it. So if it's mixed in with some paler stuff, I think it'll be fine. So I've just counted these and I think I've got something like 40 something in here. So it's a matter of deciding what what you want, how fat you want your book to be. I mean, I'm pretty sure this is five signatures with one, two, three, four, yeah, five pieces of paper in each one. And then once you add things like little snippets and and some fabric and pockets and some little ephemera and things like that. It does add quite a lot of bulk. So I think I'll go with the same. I don't really have a way of doing this. I'm sure that someone out there will have the perfect remedy of what the perfect text block looks like. I don't know. Here you go. I've got four pieces of music. Let's just start with that. We've got to start somewhere um, and then maybe some tea stained maybe some ledger one oh except I'm making two books aren't I so I do need oh well let's just do this two let's just do one for now and so I'm rustling through all my pages looking for all the bits I've folded Put a bit of that in there. And some keystone paper. And there, and I'm only making four. Why am I only making four? So let's do a fifth one there. A little flowery bit there. Okay, and we've got book pages, so let's go book page. Book page, book page, book page, and that can have one alone. And some lined paper. Oh, and there's more ledger, so ledger. Ledger. This one can have some. 
some wallpaper. Now where are we at? One, two, three, four, five. So that's six. One, two, three. That's only got four. So let's put that there. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. That's only got four. Oh, the paper bag maybe in that one. Five. One, two, three, four, five. And I think I'd rather use that one there. And that one. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I think I'd like to use another one of those foot pages here. Use one on that signature. One, two, three, four, five. Right. Well, doesn't take long, does it? To whoops. So normally, what I do do if I've got a piece of paper that is the exact size that I want my signatures, I usually put that on the outside, or that's how I sort of start and then put my like short pieces and um, kind of different pieces in there. So that's kind of how I start looking at it. Oh, I kind of wanted this folded that way so that when you open it up, you've got the whole picture. Yep, I like that. So that's, the, that's how I sort of start off and then I just fiddle around and fiddle around until I've got them pretty much in an order that I like and yeah so then I kind of so I, I stack them inside each other as a signature so, so maybe this is going to have the music paper on the outside and then See, this one's quite plain so it might be that I at some point change it around because this has also got one of these in the middle so I might actually take that out and put this book page in instead okay so say maybe I've done that one this will definitely not be the final the final cut so to speak <laughs> So there we go there is five signatures with five pieces of paper in each and that once it is so if you pinch that down once you've put stuff in there that is still going to be quite fat but it again some people love those really big fat books and I yeah they're cool so I could easily put some more pages in and I might actually stick some more in I'm not sure so that's that one that's that one done i'm going to do the other one and then i'll be back. right i'm back these are the signatures for the other book um so i'm just going to sort these out just um when you're doing when you're doing your pages don't forget that if they're too wide don't cut them all fold some of them so you're making little natural tucks or fold outs or things um to make your book more interesting or your pages more interesting if you like that kind of thing i do and um yeah and also if they're too long again fold them up one two three four five fold them up so they uh they form a natural little tuck for your for your um, book so yeah so I'm just tucking all these inside each other again I don't really have a sensible plan <laughs> that I'm that I know of
here we go so there's another five lots of paper you know and they all stick up all unevenly but that's okay as long as you kind of get them sort of centered right so that's two now the next job will be to start aging and decorating our pages before we stitch them into the book so that's what we will be doing next hang on i'm just gonna go like this that's what we'll be doing next um and hopefully you'll join me and we'll get on and do that right i'll see you later thanks for joining me bye